think I've come up with the perfect solution for our displaying comic book problems, or I may have come up with the worst idea known to mankind, and it's not going to work. Either way, it's going to be pretty darn entertaining, and we're going to laugh in the end. So let's see what happens. Hello everyone and welcome back to Married with Comics. I'm your host, Laura. And before we get into all the goodies about my brilliant idea, or at least I hope it's brilliant, <laughs> let's talk about our subscriber giveaways. So we are literally on the doorstep of our 500 subscriber giveaway where you get a chance to win a copy of a Ken Lashley variant cover that has been remarked and signed by an incredible artist. And I have set the challenge for you all that if we reach a thousand subscribers by October 29th, I will give away a special giveaway. And let's just say it will be worth your while. I will make it worth the additional effort that all of you have been putting in to help our channel grow. We are going live on the Kraken's Hordes live show on October 29th at 7 p.m. We're going to do a fundraiser for the channel. We're going to sell some comic books. We're going to be there. The dogs are going to be there. We're going to have an absolute blast with our Halloween show. And we will, of course, be there to answer all of your questions and just laugh together. So tune in and let's have some fun together. Now, displaying comic books. There are kind of a variety of different options that are available when it comes to those singles. You can certainly send it off to CGC or CBCS. You're looking anywhere from $30 to $50. When you're counting shipping and handling, that's where your costs definitely do go a bit higher than $30. So keep that in mind, you're looking 40 plus. Add some signatures, add pressing, or add the fast pass, and all of that is going to add up. Next option is a traditional picture frame. The problem with picture frames is they are not kind of set in a standard size for comic books. You can get a mat for it, but it is a comic book, kind of a 3D object inside of a picture frame. So it doesn't always work. So there are gator guards as well. The only challenge is right now they are only sized for a modern comic book. You can get them in two packs or you can get them in five packs. If you get them in a two pack, it ends up being around $21 each. If you get the five pack, it's around $19.20 each. You can choose, you know, the different colors for the screws and you can kind of match them with, you know, the comic book that you're picking. The only challenge is that if you're getting a five pack, you can only get one color screw. You can get some replacements if you want to be able to switch those out, but that's of course an additional surcharge. Last official option that we have right now are called Comic Cloaks. And Comic Cloaks are actually very cost effective. They're about $11.99 each, but they only fit modern and they do have a separate size for Silver Age comics. The only problem that I have with these is that they have the hinge on the top part of these Comic Cloaks. So it reminds me a lot of, you know, the security boxes that you see over at like Best Buy or blockbuster once upon a time that holds the DVDs in, in place. So to me, it looks a little cheap, even though I know it's not designed to look that way. It's just aesthetically, that's the first thing I think of. So I don't always want my comic book to look like it's coming straight out of Best Buy. Gator Guards, on the other hand, look incredibly professional. But the problem that I have is one of the comic books that I want to preserve is my beautiful Last Ronin except The Last Ronin is not a traditional sized comic book. So this is not a modern, it is not a Silver Age comic book. So what on earth do you do? Do you send it off to CGC and pay the surcharge just so that way they then have to find the correct size for it? Or do you kind of suck it up and not be able to display this comic book? So I think I have a solution. What I found were floating picture frames over on Amazon and they do have the screws similar to the Gator Guards. The only difference is, is because they are a larger size, I can cut it down to the size that I actually want. So the set that I picked are actually 11 by 14s. I could have gone down a size and had kind of a, a closer fit, but I wanted to be able to see how the comic book looks sort of in that full size where it's sort of floating a little bit more and there's more plastic along the seams versus 
and having a bit more of a custom size. So I wanted to see the two together. When I'm looking at the pricing for this, now you can technically get these floating frames. They retail around $62.99, which ends up being for a four set, about $15.74 each. However, you all know me, I love to bargain shop. Amazon has an awesome ability to get like new products where it basically means that someone bought it, changed their mind, realized that it didn't work for their project and they returned it. But sometimes the items never even been opened. So I found a set of those for $35. So it ends up being around $8 and 75 cents per floating frame. So for a project that may not work as well as I think it will, I'm willing to take the risk for $8.75. So I picked four different comic books that I really want to be able to display. So first one, of course, is The Last Ronin. This is the Miko Sawayan cover that has been signed by the artist. It's stunning. This is another Miko Sawayan cover that I got him to sign. This is one of my absolute favorites. So love this to pieces. Dustin Johnson is a local artist here in North Carolina, and I asked if he could do a sketch cover for me. So I gave him a copy of Batman 50, and this is what he created, which is his homage to American Gothic. I did tell him that I wanted the Scarecrow in the cover, and this is what he created. And I absolutely love it, and I think it is a shame to hide this on a bookshelf where no one can see it. And last one is a DJ Hall cover. And this was the sketch cover that I had purchased from the Kraken's Horde when they did their live show. And if you may remember, I did an interview with DJ Hall and he was actually working on this sketch cover. So it definitely has special meaning because I got to do the interview. I got to see him work on the piece and I can't wait to see what else DJ Hall creates. Okay. So as part of the kit, they give me these fantastic gloves that make me feel like I'm a historical curator of some kind. So this is the package of the floating frames. And this is the little screws. So they look very, very similar to the gator guards. These are the dry wall sinkers if you want to mount them directly to the wall. I have another idea for these beyond mounting them. Just stay tuned. This is an extra one in case you lose one. And this is the frame. So we have four holes in the corners. And I mean, it just looks like a pretty straightforward piece of plastic. With a normal size comic book, this is how it looks. And honestly, I think it actually looks pretty even. I don't feel like I need to trim anything extra off for a normal size one. And I think the nice thing is, is it should display pretty well and have that nice little floating frame. And then you have the silver, which should go pretty much with all the comic books that I'm looking at. Let's look at the last Ronin. Now, this was the big question mark. You see, even in here, I still think it should be actually pretty okay. The other thought that I had originally was I could cut this off and cut that line off. So then it was a little more snug. Okay, so I have decided what I'm going to do is at minimum, I'm going to keep these two in the full size. Just to kind of show that for reference. And then I'm going to play around with trimming these down to size for the two sketch covers. So let's see how it looks. And because the last Ronin is a little more special, we're gonna start with, this is Miko Sawayan's Spider-Man Spider's Shadow issue number one. So this is the Virgin variant, which if you haven't seen this before, it's stunning. So I'm gonna start with this one and we're gonna see how we do at least getting it assembled. And I know some of you already have the main question of how I'm going to get it sealed. Just pay attention. There's some brilliance that may work. And like I said, and if it doesn't work, then I will fully admit it. And you can laugh at me and tell me I know what's coming. So let's see how we do. 
So in the best interest of saving your sanity as well as mine, let's just say that a lot of time and effort was dedicated to making sure that this was perfectly centered. I did the screws in a diagonal pattern just so that way it wouldn't shift the top layer. So it is hard to see, but there are two plastic washers that are on each side of the screw to make sure that it does not end up damaging them. There is a gap in between, but like I said, I am fully aware of this and there is a solution coming. Now the first one came together so easily that I had so much confidence that the last Ronin was going to be a piece of cake, and boy was I wrong. I managed to get the spacing perfect every single time, and then I would put the lid on and somehow would move the comic book. I think I did this three different times. Now you remember me talking about how I was going to trim this down and we were going to have two different sizes out of the much larger pieces. Let's just say this is a bad idea. Needless to say, it was not happy. I could have possibly used a different blade on the saw, but the damage was done and I'm moving on. Well, that didn't work. If you take a look at the smaller comic originally I was going to put in here, I didn't even get to that cut. See how this rip is too short. I can't even add a screw hole without it affecting it. And you're always going to see that. I could sand it down, which was my original intention why I made this just a little bit bigger, but I did not expect the big chunk and the crack. But I was worried if I did a chop, flipped it over and chopped, you'd still have a seam here where it's not exact. So I was hoping it would be one clean pass and the answer is no. Worthy experiment, but I will say at least part of my idea definitely did not work. So time to go to plan B. Now, originally my idea was to have two kind of professional covers and then two sketch covers and have the two sketch covers be two different sizes. So then it would all look kind of cohesive and it look really, really cool on the next part of this video, which is putting this up but now I only have three. So plan B means I will eventually get these in a floating frame, probably order the different size, the smaller size where these will fit perfectly. But it does mean today we're going to get a J. Scott Campbell cover in there. It is signed by him. I do have the COA and I'll decide whether I want to put that on the back or not. Let me clean up. You can see this is all the plastic kind of shards and guck that came off of that little floating frame. Okay, so here's the front and then the back side just shows this. So I am going to put the COA back there. That could be a problem to get it exactly centered. So I'm just going to do the best that I can on that one. Okay. Number three. The COA looks pretty good, but like I said, it did not have to be perfect. I'm not going to be that particular. You know, I've got to talk about these gaps. This is my idea. We're going to start with our clamps. And yes, I know the clamps are dirty. I got to wipe the whole thing down anyways. So probably is saying, what's the point of wearing the gloves? But you know, this point, old habits die hard. Oh, the joy of hot glue. So the original idea was that I would use the hot glue to then kind of hold it in place so then I could remove the clamps and then hot glue over the space with the clamps. Now, two reasons for this. First one, it would make sure that additional air and dust and particles would not get into the comics. So that way it was properly preserved and sealed. And it also means that it's very simple. You use a razor to be able to cut out your comic book. So this is not a permanent feature. This is actually very doable and it just protects your comic book a little bit further. The thing that I learned very quickly is that hot glue in every other application that I've ever used my glue gun has never stuck very well. However, it seems to absolutely love plastic. So it really doesn't take a lot for it to work. 
So you just need to do a nice thin layer. The first time I did this, I did the world's thickest layer and it started dripping all over the place, dripped on the carpet. So I tried stopping it from the carpet, burned myself instead. And I will say if you are using your hot glue gun and you haven't burned yourself at least once, congratulations. I have always burned myself at least once or twice. Every single time I use a hot glue gun, it is inevitable. So I found it to be easiest to hold on to the floating frame with one hand and then scrape with the other. I did end up starting at a halfway point and then flip it over, scrape the other half of that same side. I found this to be a lot easier. It may be simpler for some of you to just do the whole side in one go. You will see me kind of do different angles just to make sure that there's nothing stuck on the sides. This cleans it up Mostly, there will be some exceptions to the rule, but you can use a little bit of sandpaper. For my particular purposes, I thought it was good enough. So I used simple rubbing alcohol to remove any of the residue for, left over from the hot glue. And then I used a window cleaner to wipe it off. I wanted to use the fancy stuff just to make sure it looks as good as humanly possible so you all can appreciate the final product. Whew. So I do love my idea. I think that they look absolutely stunning and when I get them where they're going to go, they're going to look absolutely beautiful and they are in a lot of ways kind of one of a kind. So I love it. Would I do this again? Yes and no. So first thing with the yes, once I got the hang of it and kind of worked out my kinks, it was a lot easier to do. I was getting through it a heck of a lot faster, especially once I kind of knew my measurements could really kind of fly through that process, knew how to put the lid on without shifting the comic at all. I didn't have as many problems as I did, of course, with the first one, which I'm, of course, expected. Lessons, learned plenty of them. Definitely don't try and cut these to size. Would I do it again? Yes, because I think that they look very unique. I think they look fantastic. And just trust me, they are not going to stay here. There is a final product that I'm going to be releasing this weekend, which is actually part two of this video, which ties into our 31 days of Halloween. So this was our beginning, but where they're going to end up, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. And I wanted the ability to, you know, move these, shift these, instead of always having to put them, you know, into a drywall, but I do at least have that option down the road if I do want to secure them that way. So having that flexibility is fantastic. I think that they look gorgeous. Would I prefer a gator guard over these? I do like the fact with gator guards, I don't have to measure anything, but I don't like the fact that they cannot fit, you know, larger size comics like the last Ronin. I think this is a great alternative. One of the things that I'm kind of looking forward to is being able to have that display with the different sizes. So I will actually be ordering the smaller size floating frames just to have it, you know, in that same area and be able to have it matching, but not exact. And I think that that's going to add a lot of really cool visual interest. So I'm really excited about that. So I will say that my brilliant idea, part of it was 110% correct. The other part, eh. maybe if I'd used the Dremel that I couldn't find, would have been a better choice. Maybe if I tried something else, eh. you never know. At the very least, I tried and I didn't waste, you know, $40 giving it a chance. So I'm still happy. And it means that I ended up with a J. Scott Campbell that is in a beautiful little floating frame now, instead of sitting in a box. But I do want to hear from you all down in the comments. And yes, it is okay if all of you think that I am absolutely bonkers and think that this was a horrible idea. <laughs> it was worth a shot. At the very least, I'm happy with the final product and it certainly cost the right amount. So would you do it? Do you like this as an alternative to comic cloaks or gator guards? Or do you say, you know what, if I'm going to preserve my comics and I'm going to display them, I'm just going to stick them in a picture frame or I'm sending them off to CGC. Which one do you prefer? This is Laura from Married With Comics, and I do look forward to talking to you all again very soon. And part two of this video is going to be dropping again very soon. Have a great day, everyone. Mm -hmm.